This is Pasties Herb. We are a team on an assignment to build the fate of men and set their hearts on fire through the media system. With hundreds of insightful videos here on our channel, we hope to bless and bond with you. Don't forget to click the like button, turn on notifications, and subscribe. We love and celebrate you. Whoever you want. If you to want to be famous, lift, if God wants to Lord, lift you, you can and lift announce you through to the world me. from Nigeria, your feet Where must touch Lagos. There are two cities your feet must touch, Abelkuta and Lagos. If your feet does not touch it prophetically, your voice will not be heard from this nation because there is a covenant. In the realm of the spirit, Abelkuta gave birth to Lagos. Who is a disciple? A disciple is one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of scripture. A disciple is one who accepts and helps in spreading the doctrines of scripture. When we follow Christ, we follow him because number one, we accept and we believe the truths. Are we together? Yes. And then number two, we help in spreading it. So when the Bible says in Matthew 28, let's look at it. Now you will understand what the Bible is saying. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18. Here's what Jesus said to us. Matthew 28 from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All authority, the word power there is the word exousia, authority. All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. 19. On the strength of this information go ye therefore and teach are you seeing now he didn't just send us to preach to preach means to declare to teach means to explain to guide to mentor to bring into comprehension that's what it means to teach go ye and teach all nations all nations does not mean all countries all fields of endeavors are we together now all of the mountains go there and teach baptizing them in the name of the father the son and of the holy spirit 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and whilst you are doing this be assured that i am with you all way whilst you are doing this you can be sure that my divine presence is going with you even to the ends of the earth colossians chapter 1 paul speaking to the church in Colossae from verse 28 and 29 paul the assignment of presenting everyone he says whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man that in all wisdom we may present everyone mature or complete or whole in christ jesus 29 it says whereunto i also labor striving according to his walking which walketh in me mightily paul said look all my travels and everything you see me visiting the church in this the church in that correcting all kinds of things imbalances impartations travels all that i'm doing is i am striving to see to it that the body of christ and those committed to my care that i'm able to present them complete in christ if you're still with me please say amen. amen so the course content for the believers education is called doctrine every believer that comes under the influence of the doctrine of scripture will become something exact something predictable regardless denomination regardless the approach to ministry now we may not always agree in terms of our modus operandi we may not agree in terms of our personalities here and there but there are certain truths that are called the foundational pillars of the christian faith if you do not believe this you are not a christian if you do not teach it you are also not a christian there are certain things common to all women black white yellow african spanish there are things common to men regardless location regardless territory 
That's how it is. When we talk about unity, unity is not uniformity. No. We will never be the same verbatim. Our experiences with God, our levels of transformation, the systems of mentorship that we are under will create those differences. But regardless what the divide is, there are certain foundational pillars of the Christian faith. Hebrews chapter 6. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundations of six of them. Number one, repentance from dead works. Number two, faith towards God. Verse two. Number three, the doctrine of baptisms. Number four, of laying on of hands number five the resurrection of the dead number six eternal judgment and he prays a serious prayer in verse three and this we will do if god permits there are foundational pillars please listen very carefully you see believers do not just grow because truth is taught truth has to be methodically arranged like a building to be able to mature the saints are we together now please don't feel bad don't feel insult insulted i apologize if you do so but then imagine with me for instance that someone just gets saved completely not a christian and the first message he hears is on prosperity you see chances are that that person's christian experience will be wrecked into pieces because he's not learned how to crucify the flesh He's not built character. Are we together now? Exposing that person to that body of knowledge. The truth is not, it is truth, but it will kill him. It's not sequentially arranged. He's not even equipped for the attacks that come by reason of that level of blessing. We must not just build believers. We must build believers methodically, line upon line, truth upon truth tomorrow is sunday millions of pulpits around the world will be filled with men and women passionate men and women who will be teaching can we begin to make these adjustments by focusing on doctrine what we largely do is just a topical exegesis of the word and for many people i understand how burdensome it can be to preach and come up with messages so sometimes you sit and say ah what have I not preached for a long time in this church? I'm tired right now. I have three services. Let's try faith. All right? So you listen to a message or two. Just go online. Get one or two scriptures. Put things together. And you know the fearful thing about the grace of God is when you stand up here, it will look like you've been studying since last year. Because you are under the influence of that grace. That grace can cover shame in a tremendous way. But it's not an endorsement of your current state. You can stand and preach something off script completely. It may even be one of the most powerful messages you would have preached that year. And you go back repenting before God and say, Lord, thank you for covering for me. Me and you, we know that I don't have an idea of what happened on this stage. Come on, pastors. Do you know the reason why you fear teaching on the altar? Do you know the reason why you feel emotionally bullied by another man? Because you are teaching opinions. When you are teaching doctrine, the truths don't come from you. It is the explanation and the exegesis of it that comes from you. So there is no need to fear. The body of truth is exact. You finish and start again. Listen, when it has to do with the knowledge of God, our exploring God is infinite. Even in heaven, we'll keep learning him. But as far as the excelling of a believer on earth is concerned, the body of truth allocated for our growth and maturity is finite. You can cover the curriculum and start again and not feel guilty for going back. It's not that you don't have new messages. So the pressure is that, ah, let my members not say there are people teaching volume 7 part 1 volume 8 part 5 and you are here it seems like you are struggling with something so that pressure pushes us into saying look what is the new thing i have not said save yourself that stress there is an exact body of truth that builds 
and provided that is what you are teaching no matter how simple find rest every other thing garnished on it is just the, the psychological prowess the intelligence and all of that but at the basic level everyone should be able to mature believers once you can understand and you can teach the course content is given to you already doctrine so there is no excuse there's no such thing as i don't have the gift of teaching i'm not really a teacher you know these guys are the ones who teach and then because of that we said you know what don't worry i even want to teach worship team come raise a powerful song let's start praying and then no 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 there are a few ministers around the world this nation and across africa they teach in about the most simple ways sometimes annoyingly simple but you look at the quality of men that they have raised do you know why because the content of their teaching is true they are methodical about it whether the lecturer is in uni Lauren, whether it's a yoruba lecturer whether it's an Igbo lecturer a south south lecturer a northern lecturer the person's accent his level of understanding etc is not is not too much to alter the curriculum so the same students can be taught by an Igbo lecturer a white man coming from the u.s a visiting professor from the uk and then people within that region and regardless the students you are sure that after four or five years you are going to graduate a predictable kind of people their accents may differ their abilities to explain there are lecturers respectfully speaking who are quite on the conservative side they can talk as if they are talking to themselves others are very engaging and happy those things are just added advantages once the truth is there the students will learn and their results will show they have learned it fine rest men of god the pressure that we are putting on ourselves to attain onto certain levels it is true that some of these gifts and some of these engracings come with um, a level of charismatism around it, I confess. So once these kinds of things happen, there is, that, there is that drive to want to be celebrated, I understand. But find rest. Tomorrow, go on your pulpit and teach doctrine with power. Teach it with truth. Teach it with conviction. 